Yo, yo, yo. What it is, what it is, man. Uh, back. Ain't no doubt. Welcome back, y'all, man. Keep it to see no podcast. Yeah, man. I'm Tom. It's Brown. As yeah. always, man. Keep back up in this thing, man. Ain't no doubt. We ready to keep it a C-Note with y'all. You know what it is, man. We love keeping it a C-Note with y'all. We love all the feedback. All right, keep keeping it a C-Note with us. Yes, and we got some uh, some interesting live events that we're working on. Yeah, where we're going to uh, be out in the streets. We're you know? taking it, it to the streets. We're going to take it to the streets, man. You know what I mean? So, yeah, just to let y'all know, it's going to be a... Uh, Keep it a see no podcast summer, man. That's right. You know what I mean? We'll yeah. be we'll, we'll be around. We in here. So check, I was on the internet uh the other day and I saw this meme or whatever they call it, John, a Calais Campbell saying it's harder to win a championship in the NFL. And Kendrick Perkins came back and said, nah, nah, nah it's harder to win it in the NBA. Right. So, which which league would you say is harder to win a championship in, the NFL or the NBA? I would say the NFL is, mm. is, is harder to to win a chip in. <clears throat> Here's the thing: it's more physical. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? More stress on your body taking a pounding every weekend. It's more players that you have to depend on. Mm-hmm. I mean, depend on to win a chip because there's so many players on the team, like. Um, with basketball, you you just need two good scorers and a bunch of nice role players that do their job, do their job, and stay in their lane. And you can, you know, what I mean, talent can win a championship in in the NBA. Like it's rare that you see stacked football teams um, with a bunch of names on it where they win the chip. You know what I mean? Because it's not really about that. So I think basically. Um, it's easier to have an imprint because basketball, you playing offense and defense. So if I'm a quarterback, I can throw for 400 yards and six touchdowns, and I still got to depend on the next man. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And if that man, if, 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 if they're not playing defense, they can't stop the run, or my, my running back can't get off, but I'm getting off. Like, I can really have a great game and we still don't win where nine times out of 10, you can have great games in the NBA and get your team over the hump. So I'm going football Mm -hmm. just on the strength of the physicality. Mm -hmm. Like now they made it a 17 uh, week schedule. So you got to take a pound in every week and then still make it to the playoffs. And by the time dudes get to like week 12, 13, everybody start getting broke up. That's true. You know what I mean? And, and and you have a lot of in, injuries from the gun bus. The, the beginning of football season and right at the end of the season, like, it, it's just so many injuries. But just because you got to depend on so many people, I'm saying football is tougher. For me, I, had, I went to the NBA. And the reason I went to the NBA was something in the NFL. The New York Giants in the 2000s. Right. And... I hate to say it, compare it, I love them. I'm, happy. I'm glad we got it. But the 2017 Eagles. In the NBA, if your star player gets hurt, it's over. There's no, you may be no playoff, but you damn sure ain't getting no championship. Okay. It's been proven. Wait a minute, time out, time out. But talk who, talk who was the star players that got hurt these years that you speak of? All right, let's take, let's take this. That first Cleveland team, Kyrie got hurt, Kevin Love got hurt. Okay. Made it a whole lot harder, right? 2017 Eagles team. Carson Wentz gets hurt. They will, well, towards the end of the season. Nick Foles comes in, gets hot. Not even hot at first. He wasn't hot until the last. He got one good game, and then he had the second half of the Falcons game because they changed the game plan for you. I feel like in the NFL, coaches way heavier than they do in the NBA. The NBA coaches can sway a little bit, but it's mostly built upon the talent of their players. NFL coaches can really? scheme for their players. Most of the time, they run plays specifically for their players. So if, like Carson Wentz got hurt, he got hurt. Nick Foles. But uh, I, I don't think like, time time out, time out. I don't think that's a fair assessment because when you keep saying Carson Wentz, in my mind, I'm thinking like. 
<laughs> Nick Foles is probably better than Carson. That's what I'm thinking <laughs> in my mind. Well, see, this is you know what I mean? But so at that point, he wasn't. He had but we, we, we had performed to as to be like that. Well, he so, hadn't played in this offense. He had been right, on other they teams. They changed the offense, catered it to Nick Foles. So that means that the coaches have that much more of an impact. So there's more chances to adjust to big laws than I feel like there is in the NBA because you you can change your sets and how you set screens or how you run a guy off the pick, but if you your next guy can't perform that. You screw. You right. know what I'm saying? I feel like you have a better chance for somebody else in the NFL to step up. All right, my quarterback got hurt. Let's run the ball more. Right. All right, my quarterback got hurt. Let's throw to my star receiver quick strengths, things like that. You can really adjust who you focus on. If your star player gets hurt in basketball, how do you come up with a whole new offense for a different type of player? You do know what I'm saying? That's right. why I say it's harder because there's so many variables. It's a longer season. More risk of injury. Uh, you have more yeah, but you know what but, I'm saying? but but like the situation you speaking of is a rare situation because nine times out of ten a team starting quarterback is not gonna get is not gonna still win the Super Bowl after they start a quarterback. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That doesn't it's usually only happen. They said twice, and that doesn't usually happen in the NFL. Yeah. What I'm saying is in the NBA is because. The team is so much smaller and you have much better players. You can lose a star player in the NBA playoffs and still win the chip. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where if you lose a quarterback, you're done. You use a yeah. running back, you're done. Yeah. You lose your, any top player, you're done at any position. Usually. usually. And, and, and yeah, usually. So that's here's it. my second reason. The New York Giants of the 2000s. And one Pittsburgh Steelers team. In the playoffs in the NFL, sometimes it ain't the best team that wins. Sometimes it's a hot team that wins. You do know what I'm saying? The Giants were not the best team in the NFC the year they won the Super Bowl the first time. They were a six seed that got really hot the last three weeks of the season, and they beat the Patriots this first time because this wasn't a 16-0 season. They beat the Patriots in the final week of the season and went on a run. And it was a hot team, but I think that year the Saints were good and the Packers were good, and they just ran. But the but but out. here's the thing that see this is what I'm saying. This is what, what we look at football different than we look at basketball. That's true. Because at basketball, you know what I mean. At, in, in, in basketball, nobody is saying Utah Jazz had the best record in the West because of Rudy Gobert. True. You know what I mean? Everybody gets off of their offense, this, offense, Mm -hmm. that. What I'm saying is both of those Giants teams might not have been good offensively, but both of those teams, they had great defenses, both of those teams. The first team with Strahan and all of them. The second team with who? Strahan and like they had. Strahan the first time at uh, OC and Tuck at the time. They had a tremendous line both them years, and that's why I think football is different, the thing, man. The thing that was different about them teams, though, but you got to remember, it wasn't like they went into the playoffs at like 10 and something. Like, no, that's they not what... They as a team what, that was like 5 and Yeah, five but and what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, no matter what their record was, they had a horrible offense. Mm-hmm. Their defense was top five defense both years. They, yeah. the Eli was so so, and their offense was so so. But the mm-hmm. defense was top five. What I'm saying is, nine times out of ten, you're not going to see a team in the chip this top five in defense, but twenty seventh in offense in the chip. That doesn't that does you know Just see the Ravens. You know what I mean? What I'm saying, you see that in football more often than not because a couple of them Pittsburgh teams won off their defense. Yeah, but you got to think about it like this. They were six seeds, right? How often do you ever see an eight seed win the championship in the NBA? That tells you that the top dogs usually stay the top dogs for a while. You do know what I'm saying? The Lakers were top dogs. Uh, uh, yeah, but like you know even with like that, the, even the, even, the, even like that, be a smoke screen because I don't really. I tell you all the time, regular season means nothing to me because, um, 
I've seen players totally become different players when the games really matter. That's true. Like when in the NBA you get 82 games, you you can lollygag and stuff mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. Aaron Donald gotta go hard every game to get them bonuses. This guy gotta go hard every game to get they can't take no games off. They don't do true. low management or none of that. You know what I mean? Now I can see if this was the NBA back in the day, but this ain't <laughs> this ain't that, man. This 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 ain't that like what you seeing like dudes still getting even though they didn't soften football up like dudes still get hit yeah, they do. you know what I mean yeah, this stuff that you see in basketball is like <laughs> this is acting like at his prime is like I, come on man like a lot of the stuff you see like it's just ridiculous nowadays so I was I'm saying football, you saying basketball. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I hope the people will let us know tonight which one is it uh harder to win a chip in football or basketball. Let us know. So we're gonna pivot since we was talking a little bit about the football, about the gridiron. We done did all the put positions on offense next to O line. So now we're gonna go to defense. And who okay. we're gonna go to? Them boys out wide that the prime time players that right, you know what I'm saying, locking you down. Right, we're going to the cornerbacks. So my brother, who are your top five cornerbacks that you've ever seen in your lifetime? And we're putting a twist on it. Yeah. So our top five cornerbacks are going to be based off of players that we've seen play. Yes. You know what I mean? It's not going to be off of. We're not going to throw the stallbacks or none of them into this one. Mm -hmm. We're just going to go off of the players that we've seen play. Mm -hmm. And I would hope that y'all do the same thing. Yeah. So my number five would be Champ Bailey. Mm. Um, Champ Bailey was a monster from day one in the league. Um, he was one of them guys nobody threw the ball to. Mm -hmm. He was an intimidator. He made everybody around him better. He's my number five. Mm. Number four... A lot of people don't talk about this dude. Um, you know him a little bit more in depth because he's been, he was in your division, I believe, for like 20 years. Washington Redskins, Daryl Green. Ooh. A lot of people don't put respect on Daryl Green name when they be talking about cornerbacks. But when I grew up as a young boy, Daryl Green was that boy. He was the man, and and you know what I mean he did everything. Mm -hmm. and so he 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 could get physical with you. He could run with you. You know what I mean. He had all right hands and all that. And like I said, he was real physical. Number three, mm -hmm. Pittsburgh Steeler, Rob Woodson. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, I'm going to talk about that after you finish. I I just think like. To keep it a C-No for you, when I was a young boy for a while, I used to think Rob Woodson was better than Deion Sanders. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? He's another one that was physical, locked down, and yeah, I just, and I've never been a Pittsburgh Steelers fan or none of that, but back in the day, when I was a young boy, I used, and we, it's, uh, around the time we went to school, I used to think Rod Woodson was better than Deion. Now, I Eventually, I came around because my number two, which a lot of people is going to frown and say, what? Or my number two running back is primetime, Deion Sanders. Mm. You know what I mean? Deion Sanders had the flash. He had the swag. I think Dion might have invented swag, really. Like <laughs> back in the day, Dion was a fly dude. He was mm -hmm. rapping. He had the sneakers. You know what I mean? He could play offense and defense. But um, I think we had this debate a couple episodes ago where we was talking about the Randy Moss thing. The yeah. thing with Dion Sanders is like He's flat. He's he's like Barry Sanders is on offense. Like it's excitement. Like you want to watch the game just to see what Dion do, even if it's just so in special teams, kick return, mm -hmm. punt return. But I've watched a lot of games where Dion. I not a lot of games, but I've watched games where Dion got burned. You know what I mean? And I've I've watched games where 
Dion really didn't do nothing because Dion wasn't really a hitter. You know what I mean? So he wasn't really a hitter. But um, I'm sorry for anybody that gets upset with me, but my number two is prime time. Mm. My number one cornerback of all time is the only cornerback that I've ever, ever seen locked down one side of the field. Like I'm talking about any of the top stars. You know what I mean? Um, I had Hawaiian shirts and what's the things they put around you on? on. They thought I was going to Hawaii. I'm like, no, I'm just a Reavers Island fan. My number one <laughs> cornerback of all time that I've ever seen play is Darrell Reavers, man. Wow, that. That's funny. Darrell Reavers, I've seen him lock everybody down from Randy Moss to Ocho Cinco to whoever else has been the man while he, he had an island in the league. He's locked them down. I've never seen nobody do what he does. And on top of it, like what I was saying about Dion, even if Revis don't get no action on his side, nobody because they don't throw the ball to his side, he's still going to come in and make tackles. He's still give you a pop and all that. Not the fastest guy, but he'll rough you up. Um, he don't get a lot of interceptions. You're not going to see a bunch of interceptions. Take it back to the house. But what you're going to see is, no, no, not in my house. Get that out of here. <laughs> He's like Matumbo on defense. He blocked everything <laughs> away. He's batting everything down. And um, I don't know. But like I said, if I'm wrong, I'm like, then correct me tonight on live if I'm wrong. But I've watched Deion. I grew up a Deion Sanders fan. He was my best defensive player as a young boy. But growing up, and to now, I've only seen one person be a lockdown cornerback, like every week. Mm. Darrell, the island, Revis <laughs> Island, Darrell Revis. That's my number one guy for sure, for sure. Wow, our lists are pretty similar. Now, I didn't put Rob Wilson on my list. Oh. And the only reason why is because I consider him more of a safety than a corner. Yeah, yeah, but he that. never said that. And but nah. he, but I feel like he was still one of the best safeties of all time. So I put him on my safety list. Hmm. So my number five, like you said, most people don't even talk about him. But I hated him as a kid. I hated when he was guarding Fred Barnett. I hated huh? when he was guarding any of our receivers. Calvin. <laughs> any of them. I hated him because. They never got the ball. You couldn't beat him deep because he was 4-3 speed. You couldn't burn him underneath because he was too smart and his feet were fast. You couldn't jam, You couldn't beat him off the jam. Why? Because he was little and stocky. Yeah. Like, this guy, no matter where he was on the field, he returned punts. You skated. He was the first Devin Hester. Get this right. Daryl Green was the first Devin Hester. Yeah. The first man that if you punted to him, you might not have a job that next day. Monster. So that's my number five. Number four, Mr. Heisman himself, Charlie Wood, Charles Woodson. He was the black hole. He made Nandi Asuma look like he was somebody. Pro. Fact. And we found out when he came to Philly, he was not. I'm glad you brought that up because that goes back to the last segment when we were saying... Remember that year that he, Namdi came over here and y'all got all them big name players? Vince and, Young and all of these and, receivers. And, and Vince to, says y'all yeah, was going to Super Bowl. And dream y'all team. Yeah, dream Stupidest team. Stupidest thing you could have and, said. And, 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 and they didn't even make the playoffs that year. And you come over here, you're Michael Vick's backup. Shut up. And they didn't, but that's why I'm saying, like, in football, them names don't mean nothing on one team. Uh, it's true. So, Charles Woodson would lock you down no matter how fast he gonna knock you off your stride he ain't the fastest dude but he'll find a way to knock you off your stride he's smart he know when to send you to the safety and guess what quarterback if you ain't paying attention i'm going that way you dig what i'm saying so he's been doing it ever since michigan killing it won the heisman came to the league Got busy in Oakland, got busy in Green Bay, and went back and retired. So I was I was torn be, between him and Champ. That's yeah. I, I went Champ at the end, but he would be my honorable. Why mentor. number three, like you just said his name, Champ Bailey. Okay. Champ Bailey was a linebacker with 
cornerback speed. I like that theory. That's this is this because is he would literally knock guys down in a jam off the line. He was Fact. that strong. Fact. Then if you catch it over the middle, he's gonna hit you like a safety and lay you out. And don't think you're gonna beat him deep because my man was fast. Yeah, so fast in the Denver air. He is kept, and guess what he did? He didn't just. Knock it down. No, 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 pimp. I was Give me go. stealing this. He was a, he had wide receiver skill and yeah. cornerback. That's a fact. You do know what I'm saying? And I feel like if he would have played on the ball more, because they tried it a little bit, tried the prime packages and stuff like that in Denver, it wasn't really his flow. If he played, he could have played on that other side of the ball. He's right. my number three. My number two is the man with the flower shirt and the legs. Oh, now, the island. The island. Revis Island was one of the scariest things to watch on TV if you were coming to New York. Because the rest of that team defense was above average to average. Yeah. He made them look so good, Bart Scott became an all-pro. He not only made them look good, he helped them develop. Became an all-pro. These dudes went to the AFC Championship game with Mark Sanchez as their quarterback. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? He... Made it, and that defense was a scoring defense because everybody was scared to throw to him. Right. The only reason why he's my number two is because he only played on one side of the field. We never saw him move to the other side. That was the only downside I had about Revis Island. It only had it was a stationary location. Huh? Yeah. That man followed you all around the field. Revis Island, right side. No, no, I'm no, almost, no, no. I'm almost sure it was right. right no, no, right. no, no, yeah. no. Revis Island, did, if he playing against Duds, he might stay on the same but side. That was Revis, his Revis right. Island, if Moss is in the game, he go in motion. He go everywhere we, we Moss saw what Moss did to him, too. He what? Did he dirty. What? That's where you got Moss got started. What? And when, it, when he threw it, he ran right past Revis. Hey, when Revis messed his hand up. Ah. Wait, which one was that? When, when he, he was in the Jets. When he was still with the Jets. Randy was with the Vikings, ran straight up the field. Oh, you're hand. talking about his rookie year. And he mossed it. His rookie ah, year. I mean, me Revis that. didn't know the game. But yeah. after that, lockdown. Now, now Revis is... Anybody crazy. seen Randy? Now, the only reason why this dude was ahead of Revis Island is because he was the captain of the team. Man. If he got his hand on the ball, he was gone. He did it on every side of the ball. He was cornerback. He played wide receiver, punt return, kick return. He threw the ball. Deion prime time Sanders. Okay. Everything on the field you could ask him to do. And he did it well. Deion's got, I think he has somewhere like 10 receiving touchdowns. He's a as, cornerback. As far as excitement, like, as he got the rock, he was Barry Sanders on defense, like my man said. It was showtime. And it didn't matter because and he never got tired. And he rarely got injured. And he did shut some good people down. He had great battles with the great Jerry Rice. Yeah. Great battles. They went right at it. He locked down Andre Rising, who was supposed to be one of the top guys in the league so bad that they wanted to fight him. But Jerry got out on Dion a couple of times. Jerry got out on everybody. But he was the trendsetter for the pick six cornerback. Yeah. So that's why that's I give it to him because my man can give it to you on multiple ways. So prime time is my top guy. Right. And I think as a young boy, when we played football, I think Dion gave us hope because mm -hmm. um, Dion was one of them guys that. That at one point in time, he made me think that I could play offense and defense right. in the league. You know? And he played baseball. Yeah, the only man. person in history to play in a Super Bowl and a World Series. Yeah, I get Dude it. Dude might be the greatest athlete of all time. I, I give me If it wasn't, and listen, I'm just saying, like, when, when Revis had it, I've seen – Multiple weeks where Revis locked down the top guys in the NFL. I've never sure. seen that before. Just because I've never seen that sure. before, I got to put him number, number one. Just, you know what I mean, on the strength of that. He, he, it, was, it was wild to watch. It felt like he had the Mike Tyson effect. Yeah. Like where if you show up and you remember 
that you're going against Revis, it makes you rethink how you do your job. That's a fact. Like, they really said that he's one of the only cornerbacks you have to study for that hard. Like, you're studying for an entire offense. The Ivan. So complex, because he was not fast. No. Let me say this to you. He would not beat anybody in a foot race. But he was so smart, he knew where to go. And he physically. And he could time the ball. He wouldn't always pick you off, but guess what? You ain't catching. He wouldn't even try to pick you he off. He wouldn't have to. You know what I'm saying? And he was so smart that the coach made his defensive scheme around him. That's that's so intelligent. You gotta understand. That's the you're getting the the equivalent of respect of a quarterback. On right. defense, you're getting an entire playbook designed around you and your skill set. That's a fact. If you don't think Revis is great, I want you to name me the safeties on that team. I can't. Hit that. Hit the response. Don't Google it. When, I'm, when you hear it come out of my voice, I want you to sit there and think and name me the two safeties on that team. He got me. I mean, I know at one point in time they had Cromartie on the other side of the field, but I don't... I we ain't learned about him until Revis left. Well, no, he played well. He Revis. played well, but he became a star when he was on his own show because they, they kind of let him run free now. Well, he was supposed to be a star when he came over there, I think, mm -hmm. and he just didn't live up yeah. to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but um, Revis is... is a different breed, bro. He's you know what is crazy? He's the equivalent of Jerry Rice on the defense. Not the fastest. Not He's the, the Kembe on the defense. No, no, no. He he neither one of them were gonna beat you in a foot race. But they were so smart at what they do mm -hmm. and was at their craft that they honed it to a point where I don't care how fast you are, I'm gonna burn you. Right. I'm gonna run these routes precisely. I'm gonna be on you so precisely. I'm gonna play my zones and my angles. I'm gonna do my, my, my hand check just perfectly to get you off in your rhythm so you can't run by me. Jerry Jerry Rice, little head fake, quick feet. Right. Boom, 80 yards. These dudes are not the greatest athletes, but yet they hone their craft to become two of the greatest players ever. Right. You do and, and FYI, even though it was late in his career, if, if Darrell Rivas doesn't get that one ring, then I probably wouldn't put him in number one, but yeah, being that he ain't yeah. got that brain, yeah, you know what I mean. I I got him up and there. It wasn't like dog. he didn't contribute. No, yeah, he contributed. He, he came in and he he did his thing. He was older, right? He had hamstring injuries and all types of knee problems. Because that's what I thought you was talking about. I thought you was talking about that one that play where his hamstring no, got no, messed no, up, where Randy yeah, Moss no, burnt him deep. No, this that's where I thought you. But even still, you can't say but maybe three times off your memory how many times he really got burned. Yeah. You really can't. And you damn sure ain't burning him on no slam. Because as soon as you go to cut, he's knocking you down. That's Literally knocks people to the floor. That's the fact. So to be that smart and that strong, it really made up for his lack of speed. Right. And it's something that you'll probably never see again. But I just put Prime up there because Prime scored more touchdowns. That's All crazy. right, so before we get out of here, um, I gotta, I, I, we gotta do pick one, clip one. Oh shit! And yeah, since we're we on the football <laughs> side of things, <laughs> we're gonna do a couple pick one, clip one. So the first one, pick one or clip one. Josh Norman, Richard Sherman. Oh sheesh! Pick um, one, clip one. Damn, it's crazy because Richard Sherman is. One of my honorable mentions for top cornerback. But I think I'm going to go with Josh Norman because Josh Norman did it on a team without as much talent around him as Richard Sherman did. Richard Sherman had Cam behind him. He had Earl Thomas behind him. Two other all pros who could cover up for his mistakes or intimidate people to not come in their zone. Right. Josh Norman did it. That Carolina defense was pretty good. You had Luke Keekley and uh, Tom, Thomas... He, there was a, the good linebackers, but he had no real help in the back. He had Kurt Coleman, bro. Right. Kurt Coleman was long in the tooth, long in, and he didn't really have it. He got it done well. And I feel like Richard Sherman was scheme. He still has skill, but I feel like it was more scheme than his skill. Because mm. he was another one that only played one side of the field. 
It was him and Byron Maxwell, or him and uh, I forgot what the other guy's name is, but they were always left right. You never saw him roaming or locking down on anybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's why uh, he didn't make my top five. So I'm gonna go. With my that's name. that's interesting because I feel as though Josh Norman got off them two years because of scheme. I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm picking Richard Sherman, and I think I think Josh Norman had what two good years in the league when you really think about it. Mm -hmm. Richard Sherman got hurt. Came back off a major leg injury, got cut by a team, went somewhere else, and still was a factor. True. You know what I mean? So just because of that alone, I'm going to pick him. He's a very intelligent player, too. Very intelligent player. I mean, very intelligent man with the Stanford and all that. But he, he's, he's very smart at the game. Because, again, another cornerback that ain't fast at all. And well, he knows what he's doing. Since we're talking about Stanford, oh, shit. pick one, clip one. Alvin Kamara or Christian McCaffrey? Ooh. Pick one, clip one. Wow. Um, mm, I got I might have to go Kamara just because he's usually healthy. And, and McCaffrey's been hurt, I think, two of the last three years. But when dude is on the field, he's amazing. Right. He can, up the middle. Down around the side, he can catch it out of the backfield. He blocks. He they line him up out wide. Kamara's faster, um, and he also played with Drew Brees, so that kind of knocks you down a little bit. But he's able to do. You can line him up out wide as a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. He even played QB a couple times. He does the wildcat thing. He goes in a slot. He, they, put, they line him up at tight end. They literally line him up at tight end. This dude can right. be everywhere on the field, and he can score from everywhere at any time on any defense. So he's like the modern, don't, no disrespect, the modern day Barry. Ooh, that's disrespect. No disrespect to Barry. Ooh, and I don't disrespect. mean as good as Barry. Ooh, Not as good, but he has that same feeling that Barry gives you. He got the ball. Oh, shit, is he going to score? Don't matter where you're at. You can be on the three-yard line going 97 yards that way. You give him a screen, and he has done it. He takes it 97 yards easily mm -hmm. with somebody, the, the closest dude 30 yards behind him in the dust. Dude is so electric. He's so excited. And the crazy thing was he was, what, a fourth rounder? A fourth round draft pick. That means 90-something picks before him. Right. Dudes win. Other running backs who are no longer in the league, other running backs that my team took over Alvin Kamara. Hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Right. This dude is very, he's very underrated. Now, we're going to see what's real this year. There's no Drew to hide behind. What you going to do, Cap? I'm, I'm taking Christian McCaffrey. Besides, for the, the, the reason why he has the injuries is because they give him the ball on every play. He's yes, their whole right, offense. He's Got to run the ball. He got to catch the ball. He got to block. Um, I'm surprised they ain't try to run him at quarterback. Yeah, they, they read him <laughs> everywhere else. So up. he's my guy. You know what I mean? That's that's definitely who I'm going with All right. off, off top. So my next, what was my next? Pick one or clip one. Julio Jones. Oh, shit. Or Andre Johnson. Pick one, clip one. Who you got? Oh man, Andre was a dog, man. I gotta go Julio because to me Julio is the prototype wide receiver. Six foot four, two hundred and twenty something pounds, all solid, four three four, four three five speed, strong, could go up and get it, vertical leap crazy, catches damn near everything. Right. Julio is another person that could take a three-yard slant, 97 yards, and he's done it. And I think he elevates, and I hate to say this because he's local, but he makes Matt Ryan look like a competent quarterback. Mm. Matt Ryan is not a good quarterback. A good, oh, well, he's he's so soft. He's average. He's so soft. He's yeah. average. He, he's benefited from having two really good, now three, and I think they, they got a fourth guy, wide receiver. Oh, excuse me, I'm five. five. I forgot my guy, Mohamed Sanu. 
These guys elevated his game and made him look good. And that's all because of Julio. Because you could line Julio up anywhere and he's taking it on you. Facts. You try to jam him, he's running through you. You try to run with him, he's running past you. You try to run with him, he cuts and comes across the middle. And that's he, a fact. Like I said, he catches everything. So, to me, it's Julio. I agree. I'm going Julio for um, basically most of the reasons you said, but it was a hard one for me. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm picking it. Is. Last one. Pick one, clip one. Marv Harrison. Mm. Antonio Brown. Pick oh, one, wow. clip one. Oh, damn. Who you got? Tough. That's tough, bro. Um, Antonio. They, they, they close, man. I got to go Antonio. Mm, really? Just because he's faster. That's literally the only reason why I'm going Antonio. Just because he's faster. Because they are so similar. They do some of the same things very well. It's just that Antonio is just a little bit faster than Marv. Whoa. Now, I think Marv has better hands. Facts. I, do I think so. Marv has some of the best hands that have ever come in the league. But he wasn't, he was fast, but he wasn't Antonio fast. Antonio just burned right. by everybody. And he does it not even just in a straight line. He can cut and be cutting yeah. and run at full speed. Yeah. So that's why I give him the edge. That's tough. Oh, I'm tough. going Philly. I'm going Marv. Oh, just on man. the strong. I think too. And, and with longevity again, like it's to me, Antonio Brown, he had monster seasons, but he didn't do it long enough for me. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm going Marv. <laughs> um, yeah, that 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 right there. I'm I'm going Marv. Wow. I'm going Marv. That's tough, bro. Well, I want to hear what y'all got to say about that one. We got to hear what y'all got to say about that one because I'm interested to know. How y'all feel about that? Because that's a tight race, man. That's a tight race. For sure, for sure. Let us let us know tonight. Yeah. We will definitely be live tonight. Right. Right. 8 o'clock. Make sure you tune in. We on IG. We on Facebook. Tell yes, everybody. Man. Tell everybody, man. Listen, right. come back. Come back. Yeah. Come on the live and come back. Yeah. Tell everybody, man. I'm Tone. That's Brown. Yeah. We're going to do it again. Shit. Yeah.